I was asleep along with countless millions around the planet to what was actually going on in our world, dumbed down by the mainstream media propaganda that fills all of our lives. Thankfully, I had already rid myself of television at least seven or eight years prior to the Lord waking me up in 2009, and I think that helped with God being able to get through to me. But it's more than TV that leads us into this whole world of deception and also inhibits us from hearing God's voice. We are living in a time when we are completely surrounded by information and information that is purposely out there to deceive us. Actually, we are in an information war. There is a war on for the hearts and minds of the people. Hillary Clinton once said, we are in an information war and we are losing that war. And this has all been prophesied. Revelation 13, 14, he deceived all the people who belong to this world. Everywhere we go, we are subjected to propaganda and not least by those devilish little devices called smartphones that never leave our sides, that have done more to reduce the intelligence of the populace. There's nothing smart about them. They are actually dumbing us down. Researchers have actually found an association between heavy smartphone use and lowered intelligence. And there's plenty of other studies out there showing that smartphone use leads to lack of sleep because of the blue light confusing the brain into believing it's daytime. Plus lazy brains, cancerous tumours and not to mention the antisocial nature of these devices which aids and abets the globalists in their destruction of the family and the continued fragmentation of our communities around us. We've seen it all too often and we're guilty of it ourselves sitting in a restaurant with a mobile in hand checking the email before we even check out the menu. I passed by a house one evening and I saw through the window a large TV on the wall bathing an entire family in its blue light. And get this, they were all sitting there gazing hypnotically at their smartphones. They weren't even watching that TV. Friends, the globalist's mouthpiece, the mainstream media, has got us completely surrounded. We are being dumbed down, controlled and propagandised 24 hours a day. And it's in the movies too. We can't go to a movie these days without being conditioned unless we're aware of what's going on. Hollywood now exists for one simple reason, to propagandise the masses. Years ago, Bertrand Russell, the British philosopher and ardent globalist, said that of the most important methods of propaganda, the press, the cinema and the radio play an increasing part. And what an increasing part Hollywood is playing today. In recent times, Hollywood has unashamedly shown itself to be the mouthpiece of the establishment, pushing the globalist narrative. Hollywood has gone all out in opposition to whatever the Trump administration has done, bad and good. Also, just look at how the recent school shooting has been politicised and seized upon as a means to attack Trump. I don't recall such vilification of Obama when the school shootings happened under him. As I said last week, the globalists are using the political climate as leverage to install their vision of the future. Obama and his cronies have already laid the groundwork to federalise future elections. In other words, to control any future election. So goodness knows what we will see in the White House next and I hope and pray friends it won't be Oprah Winfrey who CNN and the establishment are touting for. Interestingly enough friends there's an influential evangelical leader who sees Winfrey as a forerunner to the harlot movement and utterly deceived. I read that back in 2011 and I never forgot what he said. In fact, the story was reported in the Mail Online and the headline read this, Oprah Winfrey branded the Antichrist by Evangelical Christian Leader. But back to Hollywood, friends. To be honest, God-fearing Christians everywhere would do the whole world a holy service by defunding that evil machine by boycotting it right now. And quite frankly, friends, why would disciples of Christ want to fund and have fellowship with this darkness anyway? All that wanton violence, killing, horror, sexual depravity on screen and also behind the screen. Yes, friends, oftentimes those gratuitous movies are created by those who behave like the characters they create on screen. 
the cinema or streaming media is no place for those who are called out of darkness and into his glorious light. We are living in a time when humanity is awakening. But friends, there are still so many asleep. And Christians seem to be the hardest ones to wake up as they walk around in their own little spiritual bubble in an imagined state of a coming utopia. But it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets a whole lot better. In fact, the utopia will only come after the return of Christ and when he sets up his millennial reign and not before in a cosy revival setting. Friends, the disciples all lived in revival, but all of them except John saw martyrdom. Persecution and tribulation go hand in hand with the Christian life. There's no escaping it. But even though many are still sleeping, the establishment are so obviously nervous and doing all they can to win back the minds of the masses as a great number are awakening. I had to laugh the other month as two totally establishment figures got together in a radio interview. Yes, friends, Barack Obama and Prince Harry. You cannot get more establishment than them as they discussed, among many things, how people are looking for information elsewhere rather than in the mainstream. And of course, this, according to Obama, was not a good thing. I tell you, friends, they are getting desperate when they have to get establishment figures out there like that, telling us what we must do and where we need to get our news from. But friends, what I had found that prior to the Lord literally having to wake me up in a night vision and downloading his words to me, I was completely asleep and believing the mainstream narrative concerning our world. I believed and accepted it all pretty much, friends, and that's because propaganda is so effective and so powerful. It's the globalists' most powerful weapon against us. Globalist puppet Adolf Hitler, through which was formed the original plan we now see in the European Union, understood perfectly well the power of propaganda and the importance of gaining mind control over the masses. He even devoted two chapters to the subject in his book. He said this, The most brilliant propagandist technique will yield no success unless one fundamental principle is borne in mind constantly and and with unflagging attention. It must confine itself to a few points and repeat them over and over. Friends, it was by means of carefully orchestrated propaganda techniques that Hitler would influence the people of Germany, Europe and the world. But friends, that quote always reminds me of the news media reporting the collapse of the Twin Towers. I'll never forget the endless repetition of those planes flying into the buildings being broadcast on the television. Over and over again, they repeated the planes slamming into those buildings. It got to the point that I just had enough and I couldn't really understand why they just kept repeating the same footage over and over again. I just had to turn the TV off and actually thought at the time that was kind of weird that they would do that but friends what were they doing they were repeating it over and over and over again so that we got the idea friends that it was the planes that brought down those towers as Hitler wrote this is the most brilliant propagandist technique the mainstream news through constant repetition embedded the idea over and over and over on that day that it was the planes that brought those towers down now friends I've researched 9-11 extensively and I have to say if you honestly and open-mindedly look into it you will find many holes in the story now we will probably never get to the bottom of it but friends skyscrapers have never fallen due to fire before or after and there are many examples the world over the towers friends were specifically built to withstand the impact of large passenger planes the towers collapsed at free fall speed this means there was no resistance in other words not one floor hit the other each floor fell before the other could hit it there were popping sounds of explosions going on all around the building this was witnessed by the firefighters one firefighter even said the building collapse looked like a controlled demolition. Then there's the black plumes of smoke indicative of an oxygen starved fire. That proves the fires cannot have reached temperatures enough to melt the steel as the official story claims. How also was it possible for a woman to be standing near the entry hole of the plane? Wouldn't she have been
been quickly overcome by that intense heat that was melting the steel? What about Building 7, which also collapsed and doesn't appear in the official report at all? This building collapsed due to only office fires. Friends, no planes hit it. When video footage of Building 7's collapse was shown to a demolition expert who had no knowledge that this building was within the Trade Center complex, commented without doubt that that building had come down due to a controlled demolition and then proceeded to explain why. When he was told it came down on 9-11, he just couldn't believe it, friends. You should have seen his face. There's so much more that I could say, friends. But that's a very brief summary of events just surrounding the Trade Center complex. But there's also the Pentagon mystery plane and also the incredible disappearing plane that crashed into a field in Shanksville. So many unanswered questions. But what is for certain, friends, the globalists used this moment to significantly advance that agenda for a new world order. Surveillance of citizens was ramped up. Terrorism and the threat of it has always been used as an excuse to spy on its citizens. And also 9-11 was used, of course, as a justification for military intervention into Afghanistan and Iraq. <laughs>